Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good weekend, and welcome to Terminator Resistance, a game that I was not expecting to be anywhere near as good as it actually is. It's been developed by Taon, and they're a studio who've had more misses than hits, really. Um, the one game they've had that's been reviewed favourably was Monster Truck Championship. So, how that qualifies them to make a good Terminator game, I have no idea, but they have. I have a fairly long history with Terminator games and most of them have been pretty terrible, even the early ones back in the 90s by Bethesda. No, really, this was back in the 90s when Bethesda still had something to prove and actually tried, and even then they weren't particularly good games. I mean they weren't particularly bad, but they were nothing to get excited about. Terminator Resistance obviously comes off the back of a whole bunch of terrible Terminator movies. Terminator Salvation, Terminator Dark Fate... So this game really has no right being as good as it is. And yet it is. I mean, it's not great, but it's definitely not bad. Come on, come on. Where are the others? Where's the rest of the Resistance? I don't know. Ah! Ah! No! No, no! no. The game puts you in the shoes of Private Jacob Rivers, the sole surviving member of the Resistance's Pacific Division. And as tutorials go, it's perfectly competent, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, it teaches you how to play the game. It's fairly standard stuff, control to crouch, shift to sprint. If you've played any kind of first person shooter before, you'll know exactly what to do here without being told. I, I do find... I mean, I understand why they had to put these tutorials in, because this is going to be the first first-person shooter that somebody's played, I'm sure. But they do get kind of annoying. There's never going to be a game tutorial as good as Far Cry 3 Blood Dragons. If you haven't seen the sheer glory that is the tutorial for Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, I do encourage you to search it out on YouTube, because there are videos of it, and it is absolutely hilarious. Funnily enough, it also stars Michael Bean, the guy who played Kyle Reese in Terminator. The original Kyle Reese, that is. I've, I've lost track of the number of people who've played Kyle Reese over the years, but the original and best Kyle Reese from the original 1984 James Cameron movie. Funnily enough, I was re-watching Battle Beyond the Stars the other day. <laughs> What's this got to do with Terminator? Well, uh, suddenly I got a hankering for re-watching some of these really bad... 1970s, 1980s science fiction movies. Battle Beyond the Stars was a, a rip-off of The Magnificent Seven and Star Wars, produced by a guy called Roger Corman, who was notorious for basically just taking scripts, hiring rookie directors, giving them a few hundred thousand dollars and say, here, shoot this movie, you've got six weeks. <laughs> and <laughs> he actually spent some money on Battle Beyond the Stars, however. The grand total of $2 million, unfortunately for the special effects that they wanted, uh, they couldn't get a special effects house who could do the effects for less than the entire $2 million budget of the movie. And most of the budget had already been earmarked on paying the salaries of two of the supporting actors, George Peppard, who played Hannibal in The A-Team, and Robert Vaughan, who basically played exactly the same role in Battle Beyond the Stars, including some of the exact same script lines as he played in the original Magnificent Seven. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked here again, aren't I? But, but don't worry, this, this all has a point. It's all related to Terminator, because in order to get around his special effects problems, James Cameron simply hired uh, a very ambitious young special effects artist by the name of James Cameron to do all of the special effects for Battle Beyond the Stars and he was so impressed with his work uh, on that and subsequent movies that he eventually landed James Cameron his first proper directing gig on Piranha 2. But anyway, 
Also starring in Battle Beyond the Stars was an actor who goes by the name of Earl Bone. And he played Dr. Silberman, the police psychologist, in Terminator, Terminator 2, and Terminator 3. It's funny how all these things are related, isn't it? But anyway, amusing though all of that is, let's try to get back on track. Terminator Resistance. As far as the graphics are concerned, I mean, it's not pushing any boundaries. You're not going to require an RTX 3080 in order to play this. Um, but they're definitely better than average. There's clearly some effort been put in here. And the lighting effects in particular are pretty nice. Particularly when you've got a hunter killer drone flying overhead, probing the shadows with its spots, and you're desperately trying to stay hidden. Also, the sound effects. A very often overlooked feature of video game development. But they are pretty good. They've obviously drawn upon the uh, movie sound effects library. Or at least it sounds like they have. And that's something that always tends to elevate Star Wars games. It doesn't matter how bad the Star Wars game is. If you've got access to the Skywalker sound library, your game's going to sound good. Having said all of that, however, the minimum system specifications for the game are a little higher than I was expecting. Um, you're going to need at least a GTX 1050 or an AMD RX 560, 8GB of RAM, 32GB of hard drive space. Solid state drive, not required. Although if you do have the game installed on a solid state drive, each level takes around about 3 or 4 seconds to load, which is kind of nice. The recommended system specs, however, are surprisingly low. All you actually need to get the game looking as best as it possibly can is a GTX 1070 or an AMD RX 590 or better. As long as you have that with an Intel Core i5-8400 running at 2.8GHz or an AMD Ryzen 5 2600 running at 3.4GHz, you can have the game looking as good as it possibly can while running at a very comfortable 60 frames per second. And yeah, I know the graphics aren't exactly groundbreaking, nobody's trying to make Cyberpunk 2077 here. Um, but they're certainly not bad. The lighting effects are nice. Some of the models could have used a few more polygons, but the developers are trying to keep it accessible. But they've definitely put the polygons in where they're going to do the most good on the Terminator models, which do look very, very nice indeed. But how does the game play? Because that's what's important here. I mean, looking nice is good, but it should never be at the expense of gameplay. I mean, we've all seen games that look good, but play like dogs. Mass Effect Andromeda, um, actually no, Mass Effect Andromeda looked like shit as well. <laughs> okay, any Star Wars game that's come out in the last 10 years that isn't Star Wars Squadrons, you know what I'm talking about. But I'm very happy to report that Terminator Resistance, well, you know what, let's, instead of telling you about it, how about I just show you? Let's get this tutorial wrapped up first. Good old duck Aside from the M1911 that you picked up earlier on in the tutorial, this uh, Uzi, that's right, the Uzi 9mm, <laughs> it's the first proper firearm you get your hands on. Um, by the way, if an enemy has a big red glowing eye, aim for the big red glowing eye. That's a weak spot, you'll score critical hits that way. Ballistic weapons, however, like the Uzi, like the M16A3 that you get later on, they're effective against these Skynet drones, but they're completely ineffective against Terminators. This one's for you, Pop. Luckily, we're not being attacked by Terminators. Right now, we're just trying to hold these guys off. This is the end of the tutorial, uh, until we can get the bus up and running so we can get the Grab hell this. out of Pasadena. So we can take down these scout drones. I don't have a huge amount of ammunition either, so I should probably start actually aiming for the weak spots. And here Jennifer, we go. what's the holdup? Tin cans coming! Jennifer! Get in! Go! 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 Hold on! We're getting out of here! So, I'm gonna cut a very long story short here. 
you break out from Pasadena in the company with a bunch of scavengers and you're desperate to hook up with the rest of the resistance. Once safely clear of Pasadena, the bus breaks down because of course it does. You and the other refugees who escape from Pasadena hole up in a hideout while you go out looking for tools and supplies to repair the bus. And it's at this point where the story of the game starts to reveal itself to you because while out looking for supplies and tools, this happens. Jacob Rivers, Mark for Termination. Are you all right, Jacob? Jacob! So, we don't know why, but the Terminators want you dead specifically. You've been marked for termination. And you're probably going to spend most of the game finding out why and then doing something about it. In order to do that, however, you're going to have to make contact with the rest of the Resistance. And that happens very shortly afterwards as you're exploring a hospital for some medical supplies and you come across a bunch of resistance soldiers who have been captured and instead of simply being executed are being experimented on by Skynet. And it's here where I came across the first of what are undoubtedly going to be many easter eggs hidden away inside Terminator Resistance. resistance. Does he look familiar to you the at all? To too. That dead resistance soldier is Robert Patrick or at least it's modelled on Robert Patrick, and he's the actor who played the T-1000 in Terminator 2. Incidentally, do you know why Robert Patrick's performance as the T-1000 in Terminator 2 was as good as it was? Well, I mean, there are many reasons he's a good actor, but one of the reasons was because every time he was on camera, he didn't breathe. Because Terminators don't breathe, so he didn't. <laughs> Even when he was exerting himself, he did it without breathing. That's some serious dedication to his art right there. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is the lockpicking mechanic uh, from Skyrim and Fallout. Hey, if it works, it works. I'll tell you what doesn't work, however. Oh, we should probably spend the skill point first, uh, so you can take a quick look at the skill trees. They're divided into combat, science and survival skills. Uh, the weapon skill set within the combat tree, by the way, is critical. Not only do your weapons do more damage, but they also unlock access to and proficiency with more advanced weapons. Like, for example, Terminator Plasma Weapons, which you can pick up, but you can't use until you unlock Firearms Level 3, which you only get once you're at level 12. And you won't be level 12 by the time you reach this hospital level. And I suspect the game developers have done this on purpose. Because it's here where you find out, the hard way, <laughs> that shotguns are no good against Terminators. <laughs> I thought I'd killed it. No, you can knock a Terminator down with a shotgun, but you can't kill it. You are probably supposed to do this mission the stealthy way. Instead, I just ended up running around like a headless chicken <laughs> and getting shot at by T-800s until I found somewhere to hide. Oh, no, not there. <laughs> oh, God, there's another one. <laughs> I might need that med kit. No, nope, no, nope, you see me. Oh, shit, oh, shit. Come on, run away. Run away. I need somewhere to hide. Oh, oh, that'll do. An air vent. Right, okay. So, yes, this this was a fun level. Send me into a, an abandoned hospital stuffed full of T-800s armed with plasma rifles. Um, without giving me the weapons that I actually need to fight them. Of course, you're not supposed to fight them. But that doesn't mean you can't kill them. You just have to do it indirectly. So, I'm crawling around the air vents, trying to find the central computer system here, 
which if I shut it down will allow the imprisoned resistance soldiers to escape. And I found a plasma turret. Now I could destroy the plasma turret by blowing up the generator next to it or just shooting it with my shotgun. Or I can sneak up on it, use the hacking mini game to turn the turret onto my side. And the turret can kill the T-800s for me. And I like that. I, I like it when a game gives you a problem but gives you multiple different ways of solving it. Oh, he's found a Terminator to shoot at. Go, go, gadget, plasma turret. And bingo. One T-800 taken care of. And I can pick up the T-800's weapon. One Skynet R95 plasma rifle. I just can't use it until I reach level 12 and spend a skill point on weapons level 3. That doesn't mean that you can't actually use plasma weapons until you unlock that particular skill. You can use the resistance plasma weapons, but they're just not quite as good as Skynet's plasma weapons. And of course you don't actually get access to resistance plasma weapons until you've made contact with the resistance, and well, that doesn't happen until you've completed this level in the hospital. Getting to this stage does make an awful lot of noise, however, because you have to blow some stuff up in order to free the prisoners, and that attracts the attention of an arse ton of T-800s. And you don't have access to plasma weapons yet, but on the way into the hospital, you did have to bypass a whole bunch of plasma turrets, and you can hack those plasma turrets to ambush the T-800 patrol that comes to investigate the commotion at the hospital. Or you can just try to be sneaky and get past them the hard way. It's a lot more fun blowing them up with our own turrets, of course. Once you've completed this level, however, you've made contact with the Resistance. And it's here where the game really starts to open up. You're still a soldier, you're operating under orders, there's a clear chain of command, but you're given objectives to complete, and it's pretty much left up to you how you do them. And what better way to explain than by giving you an example? Commander sent me back to Pasadena to find out exactly what it is that Skynet is doing here after overrunning the place, and what I'm actually doing right now is something that is not part of my mission. There are some Skynet outposts that have been set up, which I don't actually have to take care of, but I'm going to, because it's fun, and because it's going to be bonus experience. And experience means extra skills first thing I'm going to have to do is take care of these aerial scouts. I mean, you can deal with these guys with regular weapons. You don't need plasma weapons for these. Where the light? There it is. Oh, shielded up. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Now, finish it. There we go. So, well, this is going to make life a lot easier sneaking around the outpost without worrying about being spotted from the air by these aerial scout drones. And I do have plasma weapons at this stage, but, well... T-800s are still very tough opponents, and, well, ammunition is scarce, uh, medkits are equally scarce, and if I can come up with a better way of dealing with one of these Terminators that doesn't involve expending ammunition and medical kits, so much the better. Luckily I do have options. There are a couple of turrets around that I could hack and use to draw the fire of the Terminators, or if I'm feeling particularly brave, I can use one of these things. This is a dagger, obviously, that sends an electrical charge if you get it into the right spot, which will completely disable a Terminator. Yes, you can backstab Terminators. Yep, you're Terminator, fucker. <laughs> the only problem is that these are one-use items. I only have two of them. Well, I had two of them, I've only got one now. Uh, you can make more, but again, the materials that are required to make them could also be used for making ammunition or medical kits. So you have to juggle the resources that are available to you. And personally, I think that was well worth the expenditure. Now, there's another one over there. Oh, there's one walk and a patrol pattern on the inside of the outpost. There's another plasma turret inside the outpost. And that plasma turret right there looks like the simplest and easiest way of dealing with the remaining Terminators. I just need to wait until neither of them are looking and also obviously that the plasma turret isn't looking 
in my direction. Plasma turrets, by the way, can't hear you. Terminators can. Plasma turrets can only see you. So once everybody's looking the other way, I can sneak out of here, hack that turret, and turn it against these T-800s. Okay. The turret is looking the other way. The second that T-800 turns around, I'm going to go for it. Go, 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 go. Oh, shit, I've been spotted. No, 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 no. Quick, hack. Wait, who spotted me? No, I'm good. Hack the turret, hack the turret. Quick, before the other one comes back. This is the hacking minigame again. It's fairly self-explanatory. Oops. I almost managed to screw it up. Reach the checkpoint. Navigate the rest of the way. Done it. Hacking successful. Now let's get out of here. I can hide back here and just wait for the turret to do its thing. Oh, it's the Terminator from inside the outpost. Well, I can help the turret out. And it's now tracking the other one. Go, go, gadget, turret. Again, I can help the turret out. It was fighting two Terminators, after all. And we got him. Right, okay, good stuff. Now, I'm pretty sure that those were the last two remaining T-800s in this immediate area. Or at least they're the last two that I saw. There is still another turret, which I haven't been able to hack yet, inside the outpost. And there it is. So, how do I get into the outpost? Well, I can hack the lock. Or at least I would have been able to hack the lock if I'd put enough points into my hacking skill. Uh, because I can only hack easy objects, and this particular lock is medium difficulty. So, okay, I can't hack the lock. However, I've just noticed something on the minimap. Th this icon there, that indicates... A weakened wall, which I can blow up with a pipe bomb or some other type of explosive. And that'll get me in. So let's back up a safe distance. Oh, I don't actually have any pipe bombs. Great. Or do I? Let's check my inventory. Um, no, I don't have any pipe bombs. I do have this canister charge, however. It does say it has a large blast radius, but it's the only explosive item I have, so we'll toss it. Let's get clear. Oh shit, ow. <laughs> when they said it had a large blast radius, they weren't kidding. I think it might have been a bit of overkill against a weakened brick wall like that, uh, but it was the only explosives that I had. But that's gotten me inside the outpost. And now that I am inside the outpost, now what do I do? Well, I have two choices. I do have to worry about that plasma turret. I don't want to get spotted by it, so I'm going to try and stay low. Or try and stay low and pick up any useful items. There are two ways of dealing with the outpost. I can blow that up, the energy container, which supplies the power for the outpost. That will get the job done, but it's a bit close, and when it goes up, it really goes up. Or you can hack the outpost mainframe. Um, which will turn control of all of the outpost defences over to you, so if there are any surviving turrets, and any surviving T-800s out there, for example, um, if you've managed to infiltrate without disabling the patrolling T-800s, once you blow up the energy generator, you then have to fight your way out as well. But if you infiltrate without taking care of the patrolling T-800s outside, and you make it to here, you can instead hack the facility and turn all of the plasma turrets against them. Oh, it saw me. <laughs> okay. Let's just wait for it to lose interest. And the detection meter at the top of the screen tells me that it's, it's not looking my way anymore. There it is. Okay, run over here. Skynet plasma generator. There it is. And it's an easy hack, so I can do this. Let's try not to screw it up. YouTube is watching. There we go. Oh, bollocks. Let's... <laughs> no, oh, bollocks. Come on. There we go. Made it to the checkpoint. And... And we're in. And that's taken over control of the outpost. 
Unfortunately, Skynet security failsafes have kicked in and the whole place is going to self-destruct now that Skynet no longer has control over it. However, the turrets are still going to be up and they're still going to be on my side. So if I had infiltrated the outpost and left patrolling T-800s outside, they would have certainly noticed that their outpost had just blown up and come to investigate, but because the turrets run off their own power supply and I hacked the base, all of the surviving turrets would have been fighting on my side against any investigating T-800s. Like I said, the game gives you a problem to solve, and then it gives you multiple different ways of doing it. And that, in a nutshell, because I don't want to get any further into spoiler territory and ruin the game for you, is Terminator Resistance, a surprisingly good Terminator game. At last! I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and if it has inspired you to go out and get a copy of the game yourself, I hope you enjoy the game. And no, this is not a sponsored video, I just like sharing cool stuff with you. I've enjoyed playing it, and I hope you guys will too. Regardless, whatever you decide, I hope you at least enjoyed the video. I hope you're all having a good weekend, because that is it for today. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.